Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back from break. Again, I'm Aaron Dykes sitting in. Alex is going to be back on Monday. But we want to take you now to a special fluoride report we've put together just for this episode of the InfoWars Nightly News and the several segments. You're going to see them coming up. Now, the first one is hidden footage never before seen from the Austin water treatment plant where they add the fluoride after the filtration process. I went on this tour and we also sat through a lecture along with some of the fluoride action people from here in the area. And it's incredible. They have a pretty reasonable water treatment facility, several stages of filtration, and then they just add the corrosive, deadly, and harmful fluoride on top of it after cleaning the rest of the water. It's shameful, but we're going to take you now to that report so you can see for yourself what really goes on to your water. For more than 60 years, the federal government in the United States, as well as many other governments across the planet, have carried out an elaborate hoax designed to convince the public that fluoride is added to most water supplies to improve oral hygiene. This report will examine the facts. Hundreds of chemicals are added to municipal water supplies, all under the name fluoride. Sodium fluoride and its variants are the chemical byproducts of aluminum fertilizer, cement, steel, and nuclear weapons manufacturing. Children who ingest fluoride will actually get a form of tooth decay called dental fluorosis, dark brown stains, and tooth decay. The American Dental Association recently put out a nationwide alert. In the memo, they warned parents not to make baby formula using fluoridated water. Fluoride is the active ingredient in many pesticides, like rat poison. Fluoride has been proven to cause brain damage, reduced IQ, impairs memory and learning. It has been conclusively shown to cause damage in the kidneys. It has been directly linked to bone disease, bone cancer, reduced thyroid activity, and it has also been proven that it's linked to other cancers. Unfortunately, this is only the beginning of the list of medical issues directly related to the ingestion of fluoride. After years of attempting to get the city of Austin to allow our crew in to show the deadly poison-filled fluoride tanks, we were finally allowed to. But the tour guide at the water treatment plant told us that it was their policy that we not shoot video. Well, it's our policy to show the people of Central Texas and the world who are being forcibly fluoridated to see the truth. It is our policy to resist tyranny. So here is the footage. Okay, that's what it is. So, the storage so, tanks are in that building. So there's tank two and tank one. Oh, and this is a, and this is a, a discharge line, uh, like a return line. Well, you know, we have things in the tour guide even jokingly pointed out the fact that the fluoride acid would eat holes in the concrete and paint. See, see this corrosion here? This is not corroding just from the air. This is from acid vapors in here, okay? So they've had to go in and, and it looks like replace this, okay? They had to take it out, it looks like. Here you can see the pipes where they lovingly pump the carcinogenic brain-eating chemical weapon into you and your children's water supply. This type of fluoride-based acid has the CDC's highest danger rating of number four. Again, it is in the most dangerous class of chemicals with an MSDS health rating of four. Life-threatening, major or permanent damage may result from a single or repeated exposure, organ failure, cancer. The list goes on and on, all purposely pumped into your water supply. If sodium fluoride and its other variants are so dangerous, then why are more than 70% of U.S. cities forcing it on their citizens as a form of forced medication? Eugenics is the long-standing plan of population control and domination being quietly carried out by those who are determined to bring about a one-world government and a new world order. Fluoride was used by the Nazis to poison the water in the concentration camps and slave labor camps. The Nazis knew that the brain-damaging effects of fluoride would enable them to control the populations with more ease. Today, fluoride is being forced upon Americans in more than 70% of the country. This is not law, it is a federal mandate. Because the population is becoming aware and medical doctors are speaking out, 
The feds are now lobbying states like Arkansas to pass laws commanding local governments to add high levels of sodium fluoride to their water supplies. As Americans are becoming more educated about the issue, many activists are standing up to water fluoridation and laying the groundwork for taking it out of their water supply. Dr. Paul Conant is the executive director of the Fluoride Action Network. Thanks to Dr. Conant's efforts, the Calgary City Council voted 10 to 3 to remove toxic substances from their public drinking water. A few days ago, it was finalized that Calgary in Alberta, that's 1.1 million people, are now going to be fluoride free. Now, many other cities in the U.S. and across the world are following suit. And that's why the establishment is striking back. Tim Cameron of Mount Clemens City, Michigan, proposed to his city council to have all fluoride removed from the tap water and won with a 6-0 to zero vote. Agenda item 9C, request commission approval of a resolution rescinding the addition of fluoride at the city of Mount Clemens water filtration plant. I need a motion, please. Mo motion to approve a resolution rescinding the addition of fluoride at the city of Mount Clemens water filtration plant. Second. We'll call, please. Campbell? Yes. Draker? Yes. Gager? Yes. Hill? Yes. Johns? Yes. Blash? Yes. Motion to pass unanimously. That's what one man did by simply presenting the scientific facts to his counsel. State Representative Dr. Joe Hensley of Tennessee sent letters to every district in his state urging them to stop adding fluoride to the drinking water and has had very successful results. In future reports, we will document the fact that under the name fluoride, upwards of 300 plus chemicals are legally added to your water supply. Americans are forced to drink a literal toxic waste stew that is left over from different industries who would have to pay to store the toxic waste. Instead, our cities, in some cases, pay millions of dollars a year for the poison. The good news is people all over the world, not just the United States, are waking up. Right here in Austin, we're seeing more and more restaurants advertising that they have fluoride-free, healthy, clean, filtered water. Our reporter, Darren McBreen, traveled to one of these restaurants to talk to the owner. Darren McBreen. Thanks, Alex. We're standing outside of Hobdotties, a local hamburger restaurant located in South Austin. Now, this is just one of the many restaurants in town choosing organic and locally produced ingredients over GMO and conventionally farmed foods. However, Hop Dotties has taken this trend one step further. They're also removing the fluoride as well as other toxins from the drinking water that they serve their customers. You'd be surprised that it's a small percentage that really appreciate it, um, but the ones that, that do understand what fluoride does to you, they are ecstatic. They, they love seeing that. Sodium fluoride is a chemical byproduct of aluminum, phosphate, cement, steel, and nuclear weapons manufacturing. It reduces IQ, impairs memory and learning, it has shown to poison kidney function, it causes bone disease as well as reduced thyroid activity, and is a proven cause of cancer. Well, not only is it bad for humans, it's also bad for uh, animals of all kinds as well. I just don't understand why fluoride needs to be in the water to begin with. I do not think it belongs no. in our water supply. I said it's for promoting like tooth health, oral hygiene, and stuff like that. It's supposed to be good for your teeth. Anything in the water supply doesn't sound like something that I'd be for. So if I, if I know something's being put into a water supply that doesn't necessarily have to be there, I'd rather it not be there. Back in elementary school, they made you like gargle that stuff and like and like wash your mouth out with it. But I just remember it made me sick every time I had it. So it's like, I don't know if it needs to be in my water. I think it's just awful. I don't think anything should be added to the water supply that doesn't need to be added. And it just it just sounds scary. Anything that's being put into a city's water supply without without everybody's consent. So would you like to see all the restaurants turn the corner like you are and remove the fluoride from the drinking water that they serve their customers? Well, I'd like to, I'd like to see the city turn the corner and remove all the fluoride and, and, not, and not burden everyone with putting RO systems in their, in their restaurants. I think that'd be the best way to do it. But I, I think that we can get the word out by doing that. And I would, lo would love to see more restaurants do that.
Well, you know, a lot of advocates are, are starting to educate people, and more and more people are becoming aware of the dangers of sodium fluoride. In fact, right down the street, Hop Dotties, yeah. have, they've made a conscious decision to remove the sodium fluoride from the drinking water that they serve their customers. Uh, what do you think about that? I think it's great. I actually uh, go over there quite a bit. I appreciate it, yeah. I don't want, if they can filter out anything, the more filtration of the water, the better. I think it's great that they're they're standing by something they, they believe in. I'd like it if a lot more businesses started to do that. They actually spent the money to to take it out of their own water supply. I think that's pretty cool. They don't need to spend money to take it out. It just needs to not be there to begin with. I'd like it personally if Austin stopped putting the fluoride in the water altogether. The majority of people we talk to on the street flat out don't approve of sodium fluoride being added to their water. Which is why we applaud individual activists and activist groups like the Fluoride Action Network who stand in the way of fluoridating public water supplies. And thanks to restaurants like Hop Dotties playing a role in the health of their customers and their community. I'm Darren McBreen for InfoWars Nightly News. So as you can see, although not everyone's informed about fluoride, those who are don't want it added to the water. And as we've otherwise demonstrated, it's not good science. It's not good health. And it's important we recognize that because the bioethicists of the world and the elites are trying to add more chemicals to our drinking water, such as the proposals for lithium just to treat a few people with depression. Then there's the prescription medicine that's in the water anyway. Now, we want to show you a clip from May 2011. We showed you some other clips from Dr. Paul Conant, pretty much the leading anti-fluoride activist out there yesterday. And here in this clip at a roundtable with Alex, they talk about some of the successes and how really the tide is beginning to turn, especially as the public becomes more aware. But at the same time, these mid-level bureaucrats have no interest in helping out the public they supposedly serve. Dr. Connor, thanks for coming in. Well, thank you, Alex. You know, water fluoridation is not the most important issue confronting our planet, but it's the easiest one to end. All you need is a strong wrist to turn off the tap. Once the tap is turned off, it's over. But you need the political will to turn the tap off, and to get that political will, we need people informed, and we need people organized. Thanks to you, millions of people around the world are being informed on this issue, and thanks to uh, Fluoride Free Texas, thousands of people in the city of Austin are being informed about the issue, and organized, being organized on the issue. So we're, we're keeping our fingers crossed that Austin, Texas will be our next big victory. A few days ago, it was finalized that Calgary in Alberta, that's 1.1 million people, are now going to be fluoride free and, uh, after 20 years. And people in Waterloo, Ontario, voted it out. So the squeeze is on Ontario. And don't forget that most of British Columbia and most of Quebec, the wings of Canada, are already fluoridation free. And we're squeezing on Alberta with Calgary out, Edmonton may be next, and then we're squeezing on Ontario. If Ontario was to go, if Toronto was to go, or even Ottawa was to go, I think it would be the end of fluoridation in Canada. Meanwhile, we've got a very good organizing group in New Zealand. FAN New Zealand is excellent, and FAN Australia has just been, been formed. So there's a fight back everywhere. And then a few days ago, I was in Dublin, which is mandatory fluoridation. Because of American pressure back in the 1960s, Ireland has mandatory fluoridation. It's the odd man out in Europe. Only three countries in Europe have any fluoridation at all. England at 10%, Spain at 3%, and Ireland at 73%. But lots of people in Ireland don't want this fluoride in their water. But many other people don't know it's there. Now, you've been talking about some of the big cities that are yeah. going fluoride-free. I've, I've seen reports like towns outside Austin, like Lago Vista, right. uh, uh, having it removed. Other cities not putting it in. Big fights in places like San Diego, uh, where they've had to uh, you know, bring in supposed mm -hmm. private money to do it. Um, I've tried to work out for 15 years. You notice in our book, it's the last chapter, trying to understand motivations. Now, for the, the rank-and-file dentists and doctors, it's very simple. They're too busy treating patients to read the literature. Most of them don't. You've got a wonderful guy in, in Austin, Griffin Cole. He's a dentist. He has done the, read the literature, and he's very much opposed to it. A uh, very important man, Griffin Cole. But most dentists and doctors don't have time to read the literature. We do, of course, three professors here, retired professors at, at that. Then you've got the people in the middle of the bureaucracy, 
basically they are trained not to question policy. Policies decide, determined in Washington or in the... It's like the military, they follow so orders. They, they follow orders, literally. And the CDC, remember, is in uniform. It's a uniform branch of the, of the, the, um, the Department of Health and Human Services, CDC. They're in uniform. Surgeon General, Surgeon General. It, yes, you say, it's a chain of command.